There we go. Alright. Hey, everybody. EC Rooster here, along with the indelible, indefatigable, inconceivable, in other words that don't mean what I think they mean, Mr. Faux Ender of the Ordinary <laughs> Gamer. <laughs> How's it going, Ender? Having a, uh, yeah, I feel that. Another day on Destiny. Like, I have, I have Dying Light just came out, but of course I'm on Destiny because peer pressure is an asshole named Ender that makes me wanna, <laughs> <laughs> makes me get on and play the game that I've already devoted like at least eight days of time to. Eight days of my life, full, full actual days. <laughs> so, how you doing this morning? I can't complain. I could use some coffee. Uh, way ahead of you. I'm on, I'm once again, I'm on my, like, my fourth cup. Oh, man. So I guess we'll just get started. What are we doing here? Some strikes? Once again, for those watching. Uh, yeah. You'll see that rock strike. We'd better head for the cave. Roger, Dodger. For those watching, we're playing Destiny again, and I'm playing as a warlock, but that's, that's not important. What's important is that I look damn sexy while I play as this warlock. That's all that matters. And also, I can't flip. All right, so we'll get started today. Big news, big news for uh, old old fogies like us who's who have like Walker controllers, which I need to make by the way for us old gamers when we get old enough. Uh, no more Club Nintendo. They are killing it off, or combining it with something. You know more of the details than I do. Yeah, so basically they just they closed out. They're they're phasing it out. They're phasing out Club Nintendo, and um, what they're doing is you can. It's still up right now, so you can still turn in, you can still use your coins if you still have any coins that you need to use. And um, you can um, still submit games that uh, for coins that, that were made before the end of January. So if they can't, if they released before the end of January, you can still turn in those games for coins. And uh, they're still going to give out uh, the gold and platinum gifts for those of you that reach that. But basically it's gonna be a hell of a hard to do that since uh they are um closing it down and you can't turn it in any of you guys. But um I've, what they're doing is they're also gonna release a bunch of they're gonna release a bunch of games that you can get with your coins in February. Because like usually they release I think it's like two um downloadable games for the Wii U on the website if you have enough coins I think it's like 200 coins usually mm. for a Wii U game and uh, what they're doing is they're uh, gonna make they're gonna drop a bunch of games in February so that you can just buy a bunch of games if you have enough coins to buy them and you can have a selection because sometimes the game might not be cheap there's only two to choose from so all the coins yeah. you've saved up they're gonna like as, as a parting as a parting gift they're gonna say hey Here's all the games that you wanted to play for all these years, collecting these coins that we never put on here because whatever. And now you Basically. can go ahead and spend them. So I guess it's kind of yeah, cool. Giving, they're giving everybody a quick note, 3D somewhat, something or another. Oh, wow. Everybody some kind of game for free off of this game So, what this tells me is that everything needs to die so I can get better stuff. Because. Like, so they need to go ahead and kill off the PlayStation Now service. That way, like, they'll have nothing but, like, brand new games that come on for the year. And, uh, I'll be a satisfied, happy little boy. But, uh, it is, it is a sad day to see Nintendo. That, that has been around since I was in diapers. Since I was in diapers. Like, I remember getting the old cartridges on the Nintendo. And I would sit there and see, like, a little card... And it would, you know, say, join Club Nintendo. And of course, you know, my parents were like, don't do that, that's that's the devil. They wouldn't let me sign anything. They're like, you don't sign contracts, you get it, need a lawyer. I was like, it's not a contract, it's just Club Nintendo. Yeah, they're like, they were pretty sure I was going to get mail bombed by Nintendo, <laughs> who they thought was a demon, a demon cult. It turns out they're not too far off. I mean, come on, the cult of Mario, I mean, it's pretty demonic. But that's, that's another, that's another thing. But, uh... Yeah, I've always, I never joined it because my parents uh, wanted to send me to Catholic school or whatever. They're, they're that type of, those, they're type, those types of people. But it is, it is sad to see well, it go. I mean, I'm glad that they're, they're, they're bringing up something else. Sorry, what's up? I had never joined it until I got the Wii U. And then when I joined it, I was like, man, that's, 
I mean, I'm I'm getting stuff just for buying games that I was gonna buy anyway, you know. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you get more points for, if the fallen are already fighting putting off decks, actual console on there. You just type the in the code. Will be well protected. Your credit for it. Yeah, it's really easy, and it was it wasn't. I, I thought it was a pretty good deal. But I'm, I'm hoping that whatever they bring back, because they said they're working on something else, they're just gonna close this down so they can focus on whatever it is that they're gonna put out. I'm hoping that they'll just name it for Nintendo and just add more crap to it, basically. You know? I mean, I feel like, why would you, why would you, like, Club Nintendo has always had, like, a Jimmy Buffett kind of vibe. Like, I, whenever I hear somebody, hey, we're going to Club Nintendo, it sounds like, you know, they're going to wear Hawaiian shirts. And, yeah, uh... there's so many things that Nintendo does that has, like, a, you know, you think about it, it has, like, kind of a negative connotation to the, to it when you say the name. But Club Nintendo is one of the few things that, you know, part of people's childhood, in a, in a way, and, you know, you think of Club Nintendo, that's a good, that's a, it's a good memory, you know? Perhaps, but I imagine, I wonder how many kids there are out there. I mean, I might be wrong. But how many, how many guys come in, you know, they're 15, 14 now, and as far as they're concerned, the beginning of gaming began with PlayStation 2, and yeah, you talk to yeah. them, and, and, and you say, Club Nintendo, and they go, they go, what's that, is that like prune juice? And I go, yeah, it, yeah, and then I feel bad about myself, you know. You automatically think you're poor because you have a Nintendo now, you know? Yeah. And you couldn't get a real console. Like, they just, they have no idea what Club Nintendo is. It doesn't sound cool to them because it's not called PlayStation Badass or whatever the hell you, generation. Like things to be called. Maybe that's what they'll call it. They call it PlayStation Badass, and you get all you get bad you get boots, like not coins, but you get boots for kicking ass. You, how, how many how many kick ass boots did you get this this month for buying the new Zelda? Three three kick ass boots, but you can also download a new game. But um, I, it's sad to see things die. What was that? Speaking of games, I will buy that new Zelda is awesome, man. Have you been watching the uh, trailers and the? Screenshots. Oh yeah, they showed, they showed some gameplay. It looks pretty cool. Just give me some time. I'm I'm interested because I've never played a bad Zelda game. Like this, I think that's one of the few franchises that has been around for as long as it has that I can say. I don't think I've ever played a bad one of these. Like I don't. You know what I, I mean? I'm like. I don't think, the, I don't think you played Skyward Sword. <laughs> <laughs> well, I stand corrected. But yeah, I never I mean, played Skyward Sword, really so I guess. Like, yeah, they, they tried something different. It didn't work. That's fine. Move on. Yeah. Then they went back to, they went back to kind of a, it's almost like a Wind Waker cartoon style, but it has a, kind of an ocarina cartoon style. Also, it's like they, they fused both of them to make an it's scene. Uh, they seem to put. Should definitely try it. If you don't, if you don't have a Nintendo Wii, if you have a PS4 or an Xbox One, I, I tell people this all the time. There's no point in having a PS4 and an Xbox One. I have them both, and there's no point. Um, but there is a point with having a, a Nintendo. So that's like a good secondary console. Though. You can play games that you can't play on the other two, and uh, they're fun. But I, but I feel like it's such an expensive investment to have to go buy just a system just to play that system's games. Don't die on me. Uh, but that's yeah, the point of buying the system. I think. I mean, people buy freaking Xbox Ones just to play Madden or Call of Duty. You know. I mean, yeah. I mean, I guess there are some guys who do. In my opinion, you know, I buy a system, and I mean, this is just me. Maybe because I think that I'm, I'm important and my opinion matters. But as far as I'm concerned, it depends on the specs of the system. I, I want to. I want. I buy a system because I go. That system looks like it. You know, it could. It could be worth a lot of kick-ass boots. You know, it just seems like it'll always. I don't know what's up with me and kick-ass boots today. It just seems like it'd be, you know, I, I want something that, that has, like, the, the most power. Like, I kind of want to buy a Hummer every time I buy a console. You know, like, I just want to drive down the street and let everyone know that I'm better than them. Yeah, I can understand that. So, you know, I, I have a hard time with no, buying yeah, a system. I'm definitely, not, I'm definitely not telling anybody not to buy an Xbox One or a PS4 and just get a Wii U. But uh, I would say that if you have the money and you want Mm -hmm. To have two consoles, it's, it's a waste to get a PS4 and an Xbox. Pick one of those and then get a Wii. Well, see, speaking of uh, of tech specs, there's something you were mentioning to me earlier, and me being the moron that I am, like as far as I know, technology is just a word that I can't I can't really spell that well. Like that that it's a <laughs> it's a lot of syllables, and that's that's the extent of technology in my life. You mentioned something about DirectX on Microsoft, and we're talking about Hummers right now, so. So DirectX uh, 12 just came out, and that's what um, okay, it's basically it's what Microsoft uses to uh, make their consoles or make their their software like uh, Windows 10 
stuff mm-hmm. like that run better. Um, and when the Xbox One came out, everybody was saying that when DirectX 12 came out, uh, people that worked for Microsoft were saying that when DirectX 12 came out, that it was going to change, it was going to be beneficial to the Xbox One, and it was going to be able to run better and develop it, and going to be able to use it to make better, better, better graphics, move. because they've been having kind of problems with graphics. They put out games in 900p, like constantly, mm-hmm. instead of 1080p. Think they'd mind so if we take it came out, place. well, you have, you own a PS4, right? Yeah. You do not own a PS, an Xbox One, but I wouldn't call you a fanboy or anything like that. I mean, I would so call I mean, me something boy, but not a fanboy, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, the thing is now, is like, games are coming out and not have a piece with Xbox One and PS4, because the Xbox One can't make a game, I'm not any game, but just can't, third party developers aren't able to make their games in 1080p for the Xbox One, so what they're doing is they're making them in 900p for both consoles. Mm-hmm. We're getting 900p games when they could be getting 1080p games on PS4. That's wonderful. <laughs> so, do you think that the Xbox One is holding back this generation of consoles? Do I think it's holding back this generation of consoles because developers, in order to save probably money and time, can't make two games at different uh, resolutions. Because it's just too much effort, so they, they want to just make them the same. So, yeah, we're going to have to suffer on PS4 for place, for uh, Xbox's lack of design. Um, I would say Xbox is holding back the market right now. But when I think about the sales, when I think about the Xbox One sales, I mean, nobody is still buying it. I mean, it's still, like, down there with Nintendo. You know, PlayStation is dominating the console market right now. I mean, it's been dominating for, like, a year. Um, I think eventually developers will start using PlayStation as a standard and will just tell Xbox, hey, you know, if you want, if you want our business, you know, unless, unless they, Microsoft owns them, it's like, hey, if you want our business, you need to make better, you know, better console, like, I mean, think about, like, great example is Naughty Dog, and now, now that you're mentioning that, it almost makes it seem like Naughty Dog, who is, you know, who is a, kind of pretty much ran by Sony, or, you know, they're pretty much Sony exclusive, is yeah, making Uncharted 4, which is supposed to have these incredible specs that everyone thinks is going to like push forward gaming, and everyone's already excited techn- in, in, in the technical sense that uh, Uncharted yeah. 4, you know, how they say it won't even be able to be, you know, watch, viewed at 60 uh, frames per second, uh, you know, all of these things, and it makes me seem like what they're trying to say is, hey, we're going to push gaming, and if Xbox wants to stay in the back and you know continue to uh, eat their uh, glue, so to speak, in the back of the class, I mean, by all means. Go ahead, because gamers are going to push forward, and no one's going to buy your system. And then gamers, and then game developers are just going to start developing for Sony. It's kind of what's going to happen is Xbox is going to be like Nintendo even further, where they're just going to have their their, their uh, Xbox exclusive games. You know, you can only buy the the Xbox IPs, and so whatever you know, if they want to run those at 900, that's fine. You can run Halo at 900 all you want until you you know, whatever. And then PlayStation is going to be like, hey, we're we're the place that if you are a serious developer. If you really want to push, I mean, of course, besides PC market, but if you want to push, you know, on console games, you want to push what you can do as a studio, the technology aspect of it, you're going to come to PS4. And, you know, developers, unless, like I said, unless they're locked in contractually, they have a choice, you know. They don't usually want to limit yeah, their sales, but... That would make sense. Estelle, like, me and you, from the prison of elders, they, they won't do the Archon Priest is still inside. Themselves. They'll just say, well, we'll just make it an element of people both, and then that will be the but see, the thing is, like, they might be limiting limiting their sales. But I think about Naughty Dog and Uncharted 4, which I mean, you're going to be limiting your sales. I mean, a lot of people don't have these fa- these new fancy, you know, TVs that run at such high refresh rates. But uh, they're they're saying, hey, if you want to play this game, you got to do it. And you know, I don't know if I admire it or not. It's kind of like that butthole, like driving in the uh, on the interstate, who's going to go like 65 in the fast lane. And he's like, hey, you can pass me if you want, but I'm not moving. You know, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm going the way I'm going to go. And you guys got to catch up or you guys got to, you know, make your decision. So, I mean, I do think, I will say, it's, I do think it's going to hold it down. Because I think, once again, Xbox is just trying to destroy gaming. I, I don't know what the hell they're thinking half the time when they do the things they do. It seems like they're just trying to destroy. Like, it seems like they, they really just say, hey, we want to have a division in a division we don't have a division in. It's, if that makes any sense, it's kind of like, you know, Xbox is probably still mad why, why they don't have a shoe market. They're probably like, why don't we have Xbox shoes yet? Like, what are, what are we thinking? You know, Nike has such a huge 
portion of the shoe market. Why don't we have a portion yeah, of that? I'm got, tired of, you know, we're, we're Microsoft. We're supposed to be nosy and, 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 you know, in everything. We're supposed to be in everything, essentially. So, you know, I think they made the Xbox just to, like, but yeah, why not? Why don't we do this, you know? But, of course, they don't, they haven't contributed anything, in my opinion, to the actual canon of gaming, to, to the greatness that is video gaming. But, uh... Well, I mean, um, you know, did you know, you know that, uh, Mass Effect began on Microsoft, right? That's an awesome game. Yeah, it's an awesome game, but, I mean, I wouldn't say it changed gaming, you know? And I, I'm talking, I'm talking technologically. I mean, the Xbox 360 was supposed to be, like, kind of the more technically sound system. When it didn't overheat, <laughs> you know, like I just I just don't know what Xbox is thinking half the time, but I I have an idea. I think they're just you know hey money money money, and we want to sound cool while we're making it. I think they just want to like talk and say, I think the, I think they're the guy who comes in to the to the arcade and he's like hey man let me talk to you about an hour about like the stuff I know. I'm so smart. I'm so great at everything I do, but that's it. Like he doesn't actually go in into his lab and build a computer. You know, he just talks about all he knows about computers. Whereas, you know, PlayStation is like the guy who's like, he messes up here and there, but you know, he's trying. And eventually he's gonna build like something really cool. You know, the brand new computer you want. I don't know where I'm going. This is a terrible metaphor. It's kind of a boring metaphor. <laughs> but um, speaking of uh, killing off things, speaking of killing off things, uh, Dying Light was released uh, this past Tuesday. For those of you who are big fans of the Dead Island, or maybe, in my opinion, Far Cry. Um, but here's something interesting. They were only able to uh, release it digitally in, uh, let me make sure I get my countries right, or my areas of the world. In Europe, Middle East, Asia, and Australia. So only North America got an actual physical copy release on that date. The physical copy releases are, are, are slated out for uh, February in the aforementioned uh, territories. I don't know why I said territories. Apparently... They're, uh, we're, we're all that native. Right. Uh, areas of the world. Like, let's not get, let's not show how stupid I am when it comes to anything geography. Let's change the subject well, quickly. Ter <laughs> territories is how they, how they, how they, uh, describe it also. Well, good. Then that means I was, oh, then I, I knew what I was talking about. That's what I'm trying to get at. I totally knew <laughs> what I was saying. It was intentional. But, um, I just think it's interesting yeah. because... I wonder if, if they're if it's gonna mess up their their numbers. You know what I mean? Like people are gonna read the numbers, they're gonna say Dying Light is not a massive success right now. Yeah. And well, I wonder and I wonder, you know, how many gamers are pissed off by it because some gamers just truly don't want to buy digital. Even though it might be more environmentally friendly. It's never cheaper, well, which it should be. Well, especially for like a new IP, you know, like Dying Light. It's it's not something that you've played before that you know you're gonna like. So buying it digitally, you, you pretty much, you're, you're stuck with it if you don't like it. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're not going to be able to trade it in or nothing. So if you, uh, it's kind of a risk. You know, people look at it as a risk whenever they buy a digital game. They're like, I'm going to be stuck with this forever. Yeah. Like you know? On your console or on your hard drive, whatever, you know, you have for yeah. it. Uh, not only am I going to be stuck with it, I'm going to have to look at it, take up my hard drive space, my precious hard drive space. Until I'm done with this console, or, or finally just delete it. Or, and I, then I, when I you delete it, you know, you, you already paid for it. It just feels kind of like, why did I? Yeah, exactly. Like my my biggest complaint about the, um, and we'll get back to dying light in one second. I just got to I got to get on my soapbox. You know, I haven't I haven't spoken to anybody all week. I'm I'm a shut in. So when I get a chance to just complain about anything, I'm you know I'm all for that. I am totally ready to just complain. But um. <laughs> The thing, the thing about what bothers me the most is truly that they don't make it cheaper. Because when I when I buy a game physically, I assume I'm paying for the production costs, you know, the, the cost yeah, of material, kind of as well as the game. And I, I and you know, I go into that going, I'm willing to pay for this. I know games are expensive to make. I know most of the time I'm going to get at least eight hours out of a game. You know, so I think, okay, if a movie, if a brand new movie is like 18 bucks, 15 bucks for two hours, then you know, 60 bucks for eight hours. Of entertainment seems about mathematically sound, I would guess. Plus, wow, I am just dying. Um, but I just, I feel like if I'm cutting out the production cost, when you make a digital release, you should make it half price. And I feel like I to make it up to these, to make it up to these people in these territories, which I, I totally knew they were territories. Why don't you just make the day one release half price or forty dollars? Like, say, hey, we're sorry we don't have physical oh. copies, so here, forty dollars. 
I think $40 is low, but, but $50, I think a $10, I think every game that ha that, that they sell, if they, if they sell it in hard copy and digital copy, I mean, they want to sell a digital copy for sure, because that way nobody can, like I said earlier, trade the internet or whatever. Oh, yeah. It, it helps them make sales, you know, in the long run. Uh, I don't know why they don't do it to where every physical copy is 60 bucks, every digital copy is 50 bucks. Everybody would just buy the, the everybody that wanted the game when it first came out would buy the digital copy. Yeah. So it'd, it'd, it'd be worth it. See, if like, I don't I, like it, if I were to sell it, I would take a $10 uh, cut anyway, at least this way. Um, you know, I get the game initially for 50 bucks. If I like it, I actually come out on top. And then yeah. the, for the developer, you know, if somebody doesn't like their game, then you don't just go over there and sell it, and somebody buys it used instead of buying it used. Like the way the way I'm looking at it is, hey, make them cheaper. I mean, that's just that's just a general complaint. I don't like. I think you should always give the uh, digital download price priority. I would say, like, because we're, we're paying for nothing except the game. I mean, you're making a killing, and the fact that we continue to be suckers for it is what really boggles my mind. But in in, in terms of dying light. You made this mistake, you screwed up, you know, your production, essentially, your physical production. You should give these people a discount for, for, their, for their day one release, I, in my opinion. Not, not some bonus content. Like, you, you should say, hey, we're really sorry. Hey, but you know what, here's ten, like you said, here's $10 off. But, and that way, I bet you they would actually increase their sales, like you, like you mentioned. Because people would see that and go, well, hell, I was going to buy it physical, but I can get it for 50 now on day one. You know, so you really didn't, you're not out of any type of loss. But, you know, I don't know. That's just my opinion. It just bugs me to no end because I think about how many people are not playing it right now. And um, I can tell you it's a pretty decent game. You can find the review on TheOrdinaryGamer.com, uh, my review, which is mostly a lot of words. But it does get to the point at some point, uh, like most things that I do in life. There's Most also things. a small video clip of you playing it for anybody that just hasn't even seen it at all. Oh yeah, on the Ordinary Gamer YouTube channel, but uh, of course we got it. Oh my god, I am so bad at this game. Uh, <laughs> of course we gotta do the obligatory, you know, plug-ins here and there, guys, so thank you for sticking with us. But I totally believe, you know, $10 here and there. But, uh, especially digital. Day one digital. And I don't mean like digital after like a month. I mean day one digital should always be cheaper. Because, what am I paying for? But uh, that, that's, you know, that's just my opinion. But speaking of dying, you know, dying light, speaking of dying, uh, PlayStation Music is going, there's a new thing called PlayStation Music, which will be happening. It's going to be replacing something called, or replacing Music Unlimited, which exists right now. Uh, apparently nobody's buying the service. Uh, PlayStation Music is going in with Spotify. What was that? Who buys that? Seriously. I've, I don't know anybody who, that's like someone who buys porn. Like, if you get on, you're like, hey, I bought porn. I'm like, why? Why would you, like, you have so many other options. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, like, I imagine some kids like, hey, yeah, you know, I own Music Unlimited. And I'm like, wow, your parents must be really rich because that's completely pointless. But, um. The only way I could imagine somebody having it is if they got that free trial and forgot to cancel that shit. And got stuck in, you know? uh, yeah, that's that's the probably how they way. got most of their customers, I imagine. Probably. I mean, the, the sucker cards is what I call them. The sucker... The sucker trials, but um, anyways, they're they're getting in with with Spotify, who is actually a pretty solid service, uh, and PlayStation Music will be uh, powered by Spotify, and it's not only going to offer like the subscription service, it's not only going to offer streaming music, but I think the most important announcement of this is that it will allow you to make a playlist that you can play your music while in game. It'll be background music while you're in game. Do you think that's pretty cool? That's I think that's awesome. Yeah, I like it. I mean, I hope they find a way not to make it come through the mic, though, because I really don't want to listen to everyone listening to Slayer while I'm pl while I want to listen oh, to Shania Twain. Yeah. Not that I'm a Shania Twain fan, but I'm a Shania Twain. Fan. <laughs> no, yeah, I hope they don't do that. Also, that would be annoying. I'm sure they. I mean, I'm sure they're gonna find a way to make it, you know, comfortable for everybody. But here, here's here's something that it made me think of immediately when I, you know, when I read this, when I when I when I found out this news, I thought. Well, does it does this kill game music? I mean, how many players now are gonna just listen to, you know, Bastille or whatever the hell kids listen to these days, and they're not gonna like listen to game music? I don't think so. I mean, really, you you can just play your music now while you're playing anyway if that's what you want to do. Mm-hmm. And then the Xbox 360 could do that, and you could 
have you had your get your like music on your hard drive or on a network uh mass storage device you know you could mm-hmm. play your music while you were playing on there also like in game so uh, i don't i don't see it i don't see it being the end of game music and see, most of these games these days you need to be able to listen to that game you know it depends on what you're playing if you're playing call of duty online yeah you could just listen to music and you're fine but if mm-hmm. you're playing you know uh, uncharted you, you're not gonna know what the fuck's going on if you don't listen to the game see i'm i'm kind of torn being a musician myself i think it's a great avenue to now have people more more people the same way you would get your game on Grand Theft Auto, one of the radio stations or something like that, you know, it has an avenue for people to just to listen to your music while they play the game. And you're right, people already do it. But I wonder because they're, they're, they're specifically designing it where you can play it in, in the background. If now games will get savvy and go, hey, you have an option like in your menu to listen to game music, or you can use your music, your uh, PlayStation music service, and it'll, uh, and maybe they'll have like a, a, a a playlist already designed for you. And maybe they'll go in with artists, kind of like the Grand Theft Auto type of thing. And I just wonder, you know, when you have like so many greats like Nobuo Amatsu and Martin O'Donnell who did the uh, Halo and Destiny uh, before he left Bungie, yeah. before he was released from Bungie. Uh, you know, these are these are classic composers. These are guys that like even I know the name of because they're they, they created like childhoods for people. But I think, you know, when you have popular music. Not that I'm against popular music. Being a musician, I understand. You know, musicians are hardworking people, and they love what they do. You know, at any level, believe it or not. But that's a, you know. But I just wonder if it will kill the game composer entirely. Like I just wonder if games will be like, hey, well, you know, we we can just play in the background now because you know they already start designing their games around the controllers. They already start designing their games around the functions of all the other tech of you know yeah. of their console, their system, and so. Why not? Why not just be like, hey, you know, we're just going to design games where there's no music and we just assume the player is going to have a subscription service and, you know, they just, and it'll save well, them think, money. They completely cut out their composer costs. Yeah. I don't know. I don't see it. I think there might be some, will there be some? Yeah. But the games that do that will be games that really don't have any kind of story mode. You just kind of go in there and, and shoot. Oh, so stuff all games, them. apparently. All game, all modern games will not have gamer music. Because <laughs> none of them have stories. But that's, except, you know, Naughty Dog games. Anyways. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's, that, I don't think that's going to be an issue. I really don't. Mm-hmm. Uh, but speaking of which, though, you, you mentioned Spotify and the fact that you are a musician. Uh, what do you think of Spotify, actually? Like, uh, I've heard a lot about musicians saying um, that they get kind of Jipped in the deal. Uh, I heard uh, Taylor Swift actually took all of her music off of Spotify because, mm-hmm. like, I heard if you get like a if a million people listen to your your music on Spotify, you get like a hundred bucks or something like that. Yeah. Um, that's ridiculous. You get paid nothing for. Call me a jaded, bitter guy, but as of right now, he is absolutely all musicians get jipped. Period. I mean, musicians are the one art where people still feel like. Why do I have to pay for that? Like this is like somebody's art, and there's there's a, there's still a it's I don't want to say it's because of Napster and all of that, but people have it in their mind that music has no value and music is just a thing that's always there. Like you know you get on you know you go in your car there's free music playing on the radio, if you go into a restaurant there's free music playing. Like I think people just have it in their mind that music is cheap, and so therefore you know they don't want to they don't want to pay for it. Like Spotify is streaming. And, you know, you can listen to Spotify for free. And, you know, musicians make a little bit of money. And because it's for free and because, you know, people, you know, and even then people feel like, oh, okay, music's free. Music's cheap. And I think it, it translates to the artists themselves because they can't make any, like, money, honestly, at any level. I mean, maybe touring. And even then, there's so many costs when you tour that you don't yeah. make any money. Uh, but I, I do feel like artists are stuck with it. And I feel like, you know, a lot, like, I hear two arguments. And being a musician, they both irritate me. Uh, the first one is, well, musicians need to suck it up and realize the game of music's changing. And I get that, you know. I'm not saying that everybody needs to go back to 8-tracks and, you know, and buy all this stuff. What I'm saying is that the people, is that the way we are doing it needs to improve. Yes, music, the way we receive our music is changing in a sense. It's becoming more personalized, more localized, more all digital. But it doesn't mean that it do, that it has no value. And I, I the, the other thing is, you know, people, the other argument is people just don't think it has value, which bothers me as well, because I'm like, I know people who will pay 
thousands of dollars for someone to take a doo-doo in a can because it's called art, but they will not pay 99 cents to a musician who played the song they like a song that they love a song that they've cried to that they've broken up to their boyfriend and girlfriend to but they'll pay for doo doo in a can but will not pay their 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 musician the artist because for some reason they just have this belief that musicians a are st uh, stinking rich for some reason yeah. and b the art they make is not really worth the 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 amount of money they make well I can tell you both of those are wrong. Uh, now maybe someone like Katy Perry is filthy rich, but I guarantee you, you know, your favorite band, especially your favorite rock band or your favorite, you know, group, not as rich as you think. Like, I know a lot of guys who are, who are, uh, touring big, like big metal, specifically metal is like, but every, I mean it's metal so we understand, but big rock musicians who still have summer jobs, you know, when they're not, or winter jobs, when they're not touring, they're, you know, laying sheet metal somewhere. Like, they're, they're normal guys, you know, they have to work. I mean... Music, and, and we're kind of killing it. We're trying to tell you, like, hey, if you want to be a musician, you got to suffer. And, you know, that's cool. We understand the whole starving artist thing. But it's really not fun when you're literally starving. Like, it's really not a fun thing. Uh, and, don't, and don't give me this crap about make better art, because I guarantee you there is better art. Now, maybe it's not owned by the, the uh, it doesn't get on the radio, and maybe it's not owned by the big labels, because they want what sells, which is usually the simpler, easier pop music. Yeah. But... You know, don't don't give me that crap. Music, and I because I can guarantee you, I've run, I'm being a musician. I meet them all the time backstage, whatever. They're they're a lot of them. You know, they care. They really love what they do. I mean, you got to remember, they've given hours of their life to even learn how to do it in the first place, to play their instrument, to learn how to sing. I guarantee you, they're not lazy, and I guarantee you, they you know they work really hard. Like even Katy Perry, you know, all the dancing she has to do, all the work that goes into one of her productions, and they do it every like almost every night. She's in great shape, first off, and secondly, trust me, she works hard, you know. We, 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 we pick on producers for auto-tuning and stuff, and uh, I can okay, understand that. But uh, they work hard <laughs> either to perform or to write. Uh, some of them aren't writers, you know, some of them aren't creative. But even if they're not creative, the people who do write for them are. You know, they're, they're, pub they're songwriters, the people who do write that. Those are also musicians, and they make money every time you buy the Beyonce song that they wrote, you know. Some some yeah. woman in like Ohio, she makes it. money every time I'll someone buys together. single ladies or whatever. You know what I mean? I don't know if that's actually the woman where she's from, but it's like that. You know, somebody is making money, and it's not the person you think. The artist is just a symbol. But I mean, we're 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 about video games here. I don't know why we're going on this. We just opened a whole can of worms, and you shouldn't talk. I was wondering, you mentioned, you mentioned Spotify, and I've heard a lot of uh, mixed things about it. So I was just wondering what you, what you thought about it. I think I think artists need to take control of their of their art and they need to start saying hey we want you to listen to music we want you to have the joy in music but we just can't give it away for free and I think artists need to unify on that it's like hey you know it costs money to, to do this and I don't just mean you know living expenses it costs money to go out and perform it it costs money you know the average artist you know especially like a lot of them are independent now and like it costs money, you know. They're not trying to rip you off when they ask for five dollars. I mean, five dollars is, you know, they're like, hey, we can we can live off five dollars. Believe me, most artists are actually pretty humble. They don't want to make millions. They just want to make enough, and they barely do that well, I think because when we. It comes to, to music and stuff, like, honestly, in my opinion, like, I think when you're talking about live music, um, people Almost don't really there. shirt the that paying for it. In, in my opinion, especially if it's somebody that they know their music and they like it. Um, I, I understand exactly what you're talking about with the digital music, but um, as far as paying for live music, I don't. I mean, I've never had a problem with paying for live music when I was going to see somebody I, I wanted to see or somebody see, that I knew. You know what I mean? That's but that right there, you know. I, and this is a whole other word. We're gonna get back on video games in a second, everybody. I truly, I don't know why Ender brought this up. He should know better well, I mean, than to ever talk about, talk about names. <laughs> I think we should be able to talk about whatever we want to. Here, you know, just I guess that's true. Bring it up as it goes. Let it, I got let it. it. Go Let's keep moving. I mean, I did just mention doo doo in a can, so I guess we can talk about music. If I, if, you know. <laughs> <laughs> We're covered on the doo doo in a can part. Doo doo can and, and doo 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 can, and uh, and music. Um, the problem with that is people are willing to go, you know, pay for their Brad Paisleys or their, you know, Madonnas. I don't, I don't know why I use those two as examples when I could probably use, you know, like Drake or someone more hip. But, uh, you know, people are willing to pay that. But I can assure you, local musicians are generally suffering, especially in like, you know, uh, see, like I, I guess, I guess it depends on what the music scene is like different places. You know, like here in, I live in Texas, by the way. 
here in Texas, the local music does pretty the well. The players just penetrated um, the cortex. They were running out I, of When time. I say I go to, I go see people that I that I know or heard their music, or whatever. I've never been to like what I would consider like a triple A concert experience. I've never been to, you know, a Drake concert or mm -hmm. uh, a um, Madonna concert or anything like <laughs> One Direction, even on that level. I've always been to, you know, things smaller concerts, you know, local local bands, or Texas country stuff like that. That's huh. the kind of music that anybody goes to here. You know, I guess it depends on the music scene, the different areas there. But here, that's that's local local music is pretty well supported here. I would say. Like I just feel. I think that might have something to do with it, but I, I know a lot of musicians out there feel the pain. We call it paying our dues, so we don't complain too much. I guarantee you, uh, musicians are not, I mean, some are whiny, but most of us, you know, we understand the game. But that doesn't mean that we don't wish that people would at least take, a, take the art a little more seriously. It's like, hey, you know, we understand if you don't want to pay $10 or $9.99, which is like the favorite number of like the big companies. For something, for CDs, you know, yeah. for, for C or download, period. We, we understand that. We understand you may not want to do that. But hey, you know, $5 here and there, uh, you know, really does go a long way for these guys. Because they're really not, they really, you know, if you download their music at places like Bandcamp or anything like that, I mean, you're truly, you know, paying only, you're, when they say they want $5 for it, you're paying only $5 for the music. You're not, they're not, they don't have any production costs. And that, that money goes straight into their pockets, which hopefully will go back to their, their music so they can go on tour. It'll also go back and allow them to uh, eat most of the time, you know, especially if they want to do it full time. I just think it's unfair to treat music like it's everybody's hobby. Like, even our artists, you know, you can't go and make a living at music. You have, you have to be like, oh, you're a musician? What else do you do? That seems like how we treat them. And it's like, I think that's unfair to art because, you know, a guy could be like, I'm a graphic designer. And they go, oh, that's also what you do for a living. You make art and you're also a graphic designer. It's like, well, I'm a musician. Oh, that's cool. What else do you do? Do you like flip burgers? Because, you know, and we treat music like it's a hobby and therefore it's cheap. And it just, it bothers me. It bothers me in the way because exactly music is everywhere, which means it's not cheap, which means it's everywhere, which means it's always in high demand. Good music is always in high demand. It's always in a video game. It's always in a record store. It's always in a Walmart. It's always, or, you know, whatever. It's on the PA system somewhere. When you go out to drink, you have music on, a jukebox, something. Music is not a cheap art, but that's a whole other thing. But, um... Let's get back on ga video gaming, though. Uh, totally, I'm totally lost now. <laughs> I've never talked to you about that. I'm glad to hear you know what you thought about that. I could go on and on about it. It's like I said, it's not complaining. It's just you know, if, if the guy asks or the girl asks for five bucks, or you know, if they want you to buy their T-shirt, especially if you go to see a local act, buy their T-shirt, man. Like, if you can afford it, if you really, if you really are you know able to help, buy their T-shirt because, I mean, of course, if they're good. I mean, I'm not saying you have to just give money out. Because that also cheapens the art. You do want good musicians. Don't just give any musician, you know, your money. Because, yeah, I mean, you're going to have a lot of crap. I mean, I know as a musician there's crappy music. I mean, I'm not, we're not, uh, you know, dumb to that. But, I mean, if it is good, if you did enjoy it, or if you do hear the potential, support them, man. Because, like, you know, a lot of these, a lot of these people, this is really what, you know, they can't help themselves. That's what I'm trying to say. Mu music, music like the guy who... Car does wood carvings or something. They really can't help themselves. If you're a creative type, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You just wake up and it's just in your bones to sing. It's in your bones to write music. You can't help it. I mean, we'd like to pretend like, oh, you know, we have some sort of control, but it's it's kind of like a bad habit, honestly. You just wake up and you just can't stop doing this stuff. But anyways, um, let's get back on gaming for real. Speaking of, <laughs> since we're playing Destiny... Uh, and we were talking about, you know, gaming music and whatever. I, I, this, really, this is a really bad stretch. I should just, just change the subject. Let's just change the subject. Um, <laughs> the new DLC for Destiny, I believe it's House of Wolves, which will be dropping in March. Uh, yes. There was a, uh, one of the programmers or people from Bungie got on a message board and started talking to, like, the community to to the about players. the problems that they did with their first DLC, the uh, Revenge of Crota. I believe a return of Crota. I'm so bad. You, you know more about Destiny than I do. But um, <laughs> they said that they're going to change the way that they did the upgrade system. They're going to change a lot of things about the game because one of the biggest complaints for people is that when they got this new DLC, it made all of their old uh, raid gear and raid weapons obsolete. 
people didn't like the way you had to upgrade your weapons. Um, let's see, I have some notes here. It says, new DLC for Destiny will no longer have such a convoluted process for upgrading gear, such as upgrading exotic, exotic having to reset its specs. It will no longer make old gear like the Vault of Glass gear obsolete. So, uh, do you think that's pretty cool, or do you think do you like the way it is, the new the system? Um, I think it definitely needs some tweaking, but like what you mentioned a while ago about the exotics, I, I was confused about that because it sounded to me like what they were saying was that you would not be able to upgrade them to the next tier or whatever. You would have to basically get a, get the drop again and get a brand new one at that higher level. I'm so you have sure to wait for a uh, random? Hmm. Basically, like, your, your, your exotic's going to stay the way it is, and if you want the next level icebreaker, then you're going to have to play and get the next level icebreaker. You know what I mean? That's, That's interesting. That's the way I understood it. Maybe, maybe I, maybe I misread that. But, uh, I don't know. I think I mean, it's good, though, uh, all the way around. I think they definitely need to do something, because, man, nobody wants to play, nobody wants to play freaking, uh, uh, Vault of Glass, because if, you, if, you, if they've played enough already, to where they, they're just trying to level up, Vault of Glass does nothing. And... Now I'm stuck with like 57 ascendant shards, and there's plenty of guys out there that have way more than that. Uh, 57 ascendant shards that I I don't ever see myself using. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then even, I'm hoping that with this next DLC they'll be like, oh well, you can use ascendant shards to do this, but you that. It's like, give me some for me. some reason to keep these or, or you know run lots of glass again. It, it feels like they're 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 always tweaking. Like the, I think the real problem here. Is that they're always tweaking the game, the economy of the game, the design of the game, and this is really my real point. Besides just that announcement, you know, of, of the DLC, my real point is: Do you think game designers are just getting lazier and lazier now that we have so many patches? We have so many things like this. Destiny was proving that they're, they're, they li they obviously listen to the community. I mean, you know, people are complaining. They obviously they, they went online to address it. So, I mean, do you yeah. think that games, games, what they're doing now is just creating a template and they don't actually design anything anymore and they just let the gamers themselves design it over time? Like, you know, you get on a level and you go, you know, this level needs more bats. And they go, all right, we're going to put more bats in it. And it's like, why didn't you do that in the first place? Like, why don't you design your game? You know what? I know this is going to sound like a stretch, but I wonder if game designers... Like, I don't mean the developers, I don't mean the programmers, and I don't mean the basic, like, structure of the game, like, you know, the gameplay mechanics and all that. But the people who actually design the games, are they becoming obsolete? Are we going to a, a world where, as weird as it sounds, the gamers themselves, it's become more democratic, the gamers themselves are designing the next map, are des based on their needs, on their wants, on their complaints. Do you uh, think... I think some people listen to the, their, 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 uh... What? I guess base... What I'd put it, the customer base. But um, no, I mean, I think game designers and game developers want to put out a great game. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think where the miss comes with things like patches and crap is where the publishers are like, well, that game needs to come out. You know, I mean, you gotta, you gotta start making money on this. You put a lot of money into it, and it's time to start getting some dividends. You know what I mean? I can understand that. I do. I do know publishers have a terrible hand. In the industry, uh, sometimes they're sometimes they're good, and, and a lot of times they're just really, 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 really money hungry. They just want to push it out before any other game. They want to be the release of that season. Like, you know, but we can go on and on about publishers. To me, though, well, that's, I think that's the problem with games right now is like the publishers and uh, things like uh, investors. Basically, the publishers are telling their investors this game's coming out in uh, September. It's gonna make us millions of dollars, this and that. And then the developers are telling them, you know, this game's not ready yet. We need another month. And they're like, oh, we already told the, we already told our, our investors that it's coming out in September. And, uh, yeah. We're gonna pull out. We need the money. Put it out. Just patch it later. That's where that came in. Here. Like, I can agree. I can agree with that. But just this this whole bungee fiasco. And I, I don't mean to use the word fiasco lightly. But, to me, it just feels like they, they obviously gave it an incomplete game. There's, like, lack of story. I mean, there's so many things about the game that is great. I think that's why we play it. But there's so many things that we're always improving and tweaking. 
And it just feels like their logic was flawed, like they didn't really think it through the economy. Game economies have been around for a long time. You should have a basic understanding of statistics when you design, when you create these games. And they, these guys do, they're smart guys. I'm not saying the people at Bungie are fools by any stretch of the imagination. They're very, very smart people. You know, most game companies hire, hire the best. They hire the people they want. Uh, but it just feels like the consumer, while I kind of like that we had this type of power, it almost feels maniacal, where it feels like now, if you get enough people to get online and say, hey, we want this, games games will do it, which it is, you know, appeasing their customer base, but it also feels like they're, like, why did we want it in the first place if the game wasn't complete? Are we just whiny yeah. babies, or are the game are the game companies not completing their that, games? I think a lot of that is we're just whiny babies. <laughs> so many times I've seen where people are, you know, up in arms and they want this and they want this and they want this and the gamer the game developer does it and then you get it and it's like well i mean i guess i didn't really want that you know what i mean mm -hmm. i think we should leave the game design and stuff like that to the game designers and let them do it i would I like to do are, that if game designers would design a complete game i, mean, I just feel like more and more exactly. i play incomplete games i mean yeah, but it, i mean there's times where you're playing something and you're like um guys i don't know if you noticed this or not but this is broken, and they're like, oh, okay, you know, we'll fix it. And that's great, but um, at some point, they should be able to just put out a game that works, and then, you know, if somebody wants you to fix something, like, well, this is the game. This is the way we wanted the game. It works. Key phrase there, it works, and this is the way it is. You know, enjoy it the way we created it, or play something else. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I just feel like it's ruining the experience because you get you're getting these 20 gigabyte plus 40 gigabyte downloads or uh, you know uh, f screw it when you when you put on a disc you you know it's already like the disc and then plus 40 gigabytes or something like uh, Call of Duty Advanced Warfare when I put it in my system I got it on disc it because takes I it, it downloads yeah I was like are you kidding me because it has all the patches all the updates all of this plus it's probably putting you know other packets like the maps and stuff on my system. Not only that, but yeah, then you're, then you're getting this. Annoying. Yeah, right. and then you're when you get the game, already there's like a two gigabyte download or something. Yeah. As soon as you buy a that's brand exactly new game. That's exactly what I was gonna say. So you buy the game, and then on on Xbox One, I swear it takes like 45 minutes to install the game. Like you know, you're basically downloading the game from the disc. And so does the PS4, but the PS4 I download a game, it, it, it's playing in in five ten minutes. It takes about 45 on the Xbox One just to download the game that you bought a physical copy of. And then you, you finally get that done, and oh, wait, there's a 4 gigabyte patch. I gotta wait and let That's that funny. freaking download before I can play this game online, you know? And lo and behold, four days later, you find that it's just Call of Duty. <laughs> <laughs> but I agree. I mean, I agree that, you know, at, at, the, at the end of the day, the, in my opinion, this is gonna sound so crazy, and I know everyone thinks, but everyone probably already thinks I'm crazy. I feel like these patches and these automatic and these updates and everything are the new blowing into cartridges. You remember back in the day when you would play on the NES you know, and you put in your point. cartridge yeah. and you would and you would get a brand new game. You'd put it in your system. <laughs> you're like, all right, I'm ready. I'm gonna I'm gonna hunt some ducks. I'm gonna do this like a boss. And as soon as you start it, the game doesn't start. And you go, what do I do? So first you 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 open it, you press it down till it goes up, and then you press it back in. That's the first thing you do. Doesn't start again. Then you pull it out you gotta, you gotta and you blow it. into you it. it. Yeah, you got it. You tap it a bit. You blow into it. You do some juju on it. You call your priest. I mean, you do all kinds of things. You start sacrificing chickens, and finally, <laughs> the game starts playing, and you go, "Yes, I get to hunt some ducks." And then your mom calls you because it's time for bed. I feel like this <laughs> new, like these new, uh, these new patches are the same thing. We're just blowing in the cartridges. Only so what you're saying is we need to learn to blow better. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm saying everybody needs to learn to blow better, but that's just personal preference. <laughs> like, to me, it's just an inconvenience in a time where we're supposed to be less con inconvenienced. We're supposed, you know. Well, yeah, we, li we, live in a, we live in a world of instant gratification. And when exactly. you get that these days, you get very upset. Yeah. And you get very upset when you put in a game and there's a two gigabyte download immediately and you can't play the game yet and your friends already playing it and they're laughing at you and you go hold on I got to update and they go that's cool we're going to go make new friends which you know this is the extreme example or this, at least these are my jerk friends you know they're just, they'll just leave me for a download they're like oh you're downloading well we don't want to play with you anymore we're done 
But um, <laughs> I just feel like it ruins the gaming experience. You're you're putting too high of demand. You're putting a lot of demand on our bandwidth immediately. I know I know we have to we, we have to use it to play the game, but we also have to download when we could be doing other things. You know. Also, it just looks lazy. It just feels like why don't you create a complete game? Quit putting out a game a year. Quit doing these these what? ridiculous deadlines. Real quick, Rooster, uh, it's, it's letting me do level 30 for the daily today. Oh, cool. Maybe it was just yesterday. Maybe? I don't know. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah I mean, well, the problem with that is it seems like we're going backwards instead of forwards. You know, whether they came, we had a Nintendo and or a, a Nintendo 64 for you younger guys or, you know, GameCube. And you would put that in there and it would work. And then... You know, you wanted more out of gaming, so they did, and then they gave you a 360, and you'd put it in there, and it would work. And, you know, at least on day one, you know, the there wasn't already a patch. And then all of a sudden, you're like, oh, we can patch this stuff, you know? And patch start, patches started coming in, and it was a good thing, though. I mean, we already have the game, but something was messed up. They fixed it. Great. Mm -hmm. You know, there was a, there was a bug to get them to the map in uh, Call of Duty, and they fixed that. Good. You know, I hate those douches that do that. But uh, so the, all of a sudden now, it's become this thing where... You can put out uh, a half-made game and just you get you got another three weeks while they're shipping it to finish. I'm ready it, if you are. And then just throw a patch out there, and th th it goes back to what I was talking about with instant gratification. It goes to where we used to have instant gratification with these freaking physical copy Nintendo 64 games, and now here we are, three or four generations later in console gaming, and instant gratification is gone. You know, you can't just buy the game and play it. I mean, it, it exactly. It feels like, like you said, we're going backwards. Like I totally agree with everything you just said. Like it's just, it's just kind of strange. Now, granted, I'm a patient guy, so I'm okay with like you know up, updates and stuff. I mean, I, I complain about them. I, I don't, I, I don't like not just an update. I don't like when you know they're, you know for a fact they don't tell you, but you know they're really just adding things to the game that they were like, oh, we didn't do it, and we, we totally, and like. They, they probably already before they ship the game were like, well, we don't have time, but you know what? It's no big deal. We'll just put it out on day one. We'll have the, we'll go ahead and just get this patch ready. That's gonna add new content yeah, to the game. Exactly. We're gonna tell them it's just like you know basic update, or they might you know they might not lie. They might just tell you, but you know they're just like whatever. We gotta do it. I don't necessarily blame the yeah, developers because you said a lot of his publishers. Yeah, I'd say at least don't lie to me. Don't 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 tell me you know. Oh, we found some stuff after the fact. I know you did it. You decided that's to do that. The way into put the land. game out there and complete. Exactly. And then, guess what? You put that patch out thinking that well, the patch will fix it, and it didn't. And then you put out a piece of shit game, and you, and you suffer for it, you know? And we all suffer for it because we paid for it. I just, it's I just ridiculous. find it, I find it ridiculous. I agree. Okay. But, um, it just, it's just an interesting way gaming is, is going. I don't necessarily hate it. I like the fact that we can always improve games. But the thing is, is you can improve a game forever. You can always... Add things, update it, update it, update it. Which is brings me to my next point about remasters. It's like instead of patching a game, we're, we're getting to this. We're starting to get into a, a realm with uh, Resident Evil HD. Uh, the Grim Fandango just came out, which was an old 1998 Lucas like arts game or whatever. It's like we're we're remastering games. Does are you tired of them or do you like the remastering of games? You know, I guess it, I can't. I, I have to be objective about it. I think it depends. For me, it depends on the game, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, uh, so I guess it depends, like, it's the same for everybody, because somebody might be super excited about that Grim Fandango, me, not so much. Uh, somebody might think that the Resident Evil one is kind of stupid, but me, I haven't played it in 15 years, I'm, I'm looking forward to playing it again, you know, especially if they can make the graphics hold up a little bit better. Mm -hmm. um, a, a, an Uncharted collection on the PS4, I would still buy that, just to have it on the PS4. I don't have to keep my PS3 just so I can keep that keep those games for whenever I want to play them. I'll probably keep the PS3 anyway, but that's not the point. I don't have to play them on my PS3. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't have to touch that DualShock 3 again. <laughs> I like having that DualShock 4 now. I don't want to go backwards. But, um, the yeah, you know, I, I think, I think, I think they're fine. I think, I think there's a point where, um, they go too far with it, certainly. Uh, you know, I forgot, we, I, we were level 30. We were level 30. <laughs> um, I think there's definitely a part where they go too far with it, but, um, you know, for every one person that they wouldn't make it if nobody was there to buy it. The way what it boils down to, right? Oh crap! Well, we suck. <laughs> we do suck. <laughs> I mean, oh, we can respond. They, they, I, I'm, I'm torn on it because I'm kind of like, and maybe I'm just an old guy, you know, remembering Club Nintendo days and remembering the days of blowing into cartridges. 
but I, I kind of like when a game is just what it was. You know what I mean? Like, it was on that system, it, you had to be there in the moment, it, it, you know. I mean, I want new, I want kids to have, to experience the things I, I loved, you know. But I also kind of yeah. want them to have their own stuff. So it's like, I'd rather a kid say, or you know, for every generation, they just have, they have their Mario. As opposed to having to go back to my Mario. It's like, I want you to have your, you know, what you know, and so, re like, because otherwise, you know, what is it? We're all just kind of, it's rehashing, in my opinion. It's not remastering, it's rehashing. Hollywood is notorious for it, or they'll release yeah. a movie, and then 10 years later, which, lo and behold, is about the time people who were, who were 12 are now 22, so they're at, A, the nostalgia age, and then also they have these new kids who don't know what the hell it is because they weren't born yet. So you have 12-year-olds yeah. who see Spider-Man and go, Spider-Man's awesome. And you have these 22-year-olds who go, yeah, I remember Spider-Man. Let's go watch it because I'm nostalgic. And so they, they just keep suckering us. They keep doing that double punch. It's about every 10 years in culture we do this with everything. We rehash, rehash, rehash. And I'm starting to see it with the remastering. You said it's been about 15 years since Resident Evil. But truly it's actually been about 10 because they did do the remaster yeah. for the GameCube. Which, won't, lo and behold, it. yeah. it's about that 10-year period. I remember it was about 2004. And that's just what they do, and it bothers me because, yeah, I want, I want kids to see the glory that was Resident Evil, to see the glory that was Ma Mario, but I kind, of, I kind of want them to have their own stuff, because that's what I love about my stuff. It was my stuff. There was, there was value to it because it was my Mario, and me and my friends, we can sit and talk about my Mario, and, you know, we can have our little, you know, our, our hipster t-shirts that show Mar the old vintage Mario, and we can, like, have our little in-jokes and whatever. And we feel like we're so important and like life is great because it's all ours. I want these kids to be douchebags just like us. Like I want these kids to have the, their hipster shirts and their and maybe not Mario, but their version of that. Like their their history, you know. The Simpsons were my generation. I want kids now to have their Family Guy. Family Guy was somebody else's generation. And then what what comes next, you know? Like there's gonna be a new cartoon that these kids are gonna talk about. Like I want to be at the point in my life where a kid will come to me and he'll say, "Hey, do you you know?" Dick Dinkley, and I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, I have no idea what the hell you're talking about, kid, and I feel <laughs> old, but I'm also proud because these kids finally have their own, I would say, their own culture in a way. I mean, yeah. it, they're not getting ours. E even though there might be money there, and you know, they, you know, I just don't like remasters because I feel like it's, it takes away the here and now of, of something. It takes away the timelessness of something when you just keep pumping it out. It's like, hey, we're gonna, you know, like, yeah. it's like a movie, you know, you like the original Total Recall, which to me is a classic, and then they make a piece of crap, and it's and you go, great, you know, now these yeah. kids are gonna think Total Recall is a piece of crap, or they're gonna movies, love it, and these kids love crap. Story. Yeah, movies are a different story because very rarely do they put out uh, a remake of a movie that you think matches up well to the one that you saw, the original. You know what I mean? Yeah. Very That's really what I really want. Really I, really I don't. I don't want to have to do that. I want to say Total Recall is awesome, and the kids go, "Oh, cool! I'll go check out the old one when they can, yeah. if they ever get to." Or they'll look up YouTube videos of it, and then they'll move on and say, "But well, you know what's really cool? Blah 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 that you don't know about." And I go, "I guess it is because I'm old." You know, I don't know. I just I want to feel old. I don't <laughs> like. I feel like these kids are getting suckered. Like I want them to experience the glory in a way, but I'd rather just tell them about it. Give me something to talk about on their bedside. You know, not. If I can't talk to my grandchild about Mario and tell them bedtime stories about Mario, you're ruining what I have left as a grand grandfather. I mean, all my, all my kids will probably disown me at that point, you know. And I can't. I, all I have are my grandkids and my and my early bird special pudding. And you guys are taking it away because you keep giving these kids all this stuff, and they go figure out themselves. And you go, hey, let me tell you about Mario. They go, we already know, Grandpa. You're old, stupid, and you smell. And it's like, <laughs> I'm tired of that. You know, I want let me have my stories for my my of my generation for my kids. But that's just my opinion. Yeah, I can see that, but um, like movies and stuff, basically what I did was, um, you know, Goonies was really big for me when I was a kid, so one of the beauties of being a parent is you can make your kids listen to you, so <laughs> I made my son sit there and watch the Goonies, he didn't want to, he's like, what, 1980 something, are you, are you kidding me? You want me to watch something from the 1900s, is the way he looked at it, I'm like, you motherfuckers, right? <laughs> but, uh, if it's not by Michael Bay and it's not explosions, I'm not interested. I don't understand <laughs> what's going on here. Like, to him, like the 1900s, I mean, think about that. The 1900s is what they look at that now. Uh, that's like us thinking 1800s, you know. But um, I made him sit there and I, I made him sit there and watch it, and he liked it, you know. And he's watched it several times since. 
Um, but granted, that's not a remake. I, I wouldn't be forcing a remake down their throat. But uh, original, yeah, why not? You know. And that's what I mean. I you should. Same thing about games, I guess, in a way. I mean, Somewhere on this thing, there's. A let them play the eight. I want him to play Mario Three. I want him to play Mario Three just because uh, this game is really cool. You should try it. Now, there's a point where it's gone too far. I mean, do we really need a different kind of angle? I'm sure these guys would love it. But when you think about, you know, games that made gaming what it is and stuff, I, I haven't heard of Grim Fandango until it got yeah, remastered, you know? Mm -hmm. I think there should be some kind of thought behind what really deserves to be remade or needs to be remade, I'd say. See, I wonder but, uh, if it's just cheaper. People are buying it, it's fine. Why don't oh, yeah, you create a limited cool. edition, higher technological yeah. spec version of the old consoles? Make an 8-bit NES again, which you could probably fit in the size of a cell phone. Probably, probably smaller than yeah. that. Actually, smaller than that. But um, and let kids play the original 8-bit games. Uh, the way they were. The way they were, on 8-bit nostalgia systems that you that you know because the technology is so old, you can only you can charge 25 bucks for, and. Instead of remastering, and spending all this money on remastering, <laughs> but maybe maybe that's just me. I'd rather the kids get the original, and the, if they want to see it, but really I'd rather kids just be original, as best they can in a world that, of course, everybody owns something, and it's really difficult to get a get a footing in this world, you know. But that's a whole nother story. But with that, with this whole concept of be original and come original, and all you three eleven heads out there. This is the end of our show. We are at past the hour mark, and uh, we really oh, appreciate oh. you guys. What's up, Ender? Oh no, I was just I was surprised it passed by that fast. I mean, it's what happens when you talk about nothing for an hour. Time flies. It's great, isn't it? <laughs> talk about doo-doo <laughs> in a can and Katy Perry and Madonna. You are just an hour goes by, and it's pretty much that's that's what that's my whole day. Usually, I'm I always just like Katy Perry, doo-doo in a pan, and Madonna. And, I could have talked about Katy Perry some more, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I could look at Katy Perry some more. She's a beautiful woman, but uh, she's it's not so anywhere cool. near where I'm looking right now. Unfortunately, I'm stuck with Ender. But uh, with that, guys, thank you so <laughs> much for checking out The Ordinary Gamer Show. That's The Ordinary Gamer. We're ordinary guys with extraordinary opinion. Uh, you can always go to our website, check out our reviews. We always keep as current as we can on everything from uh, PC to console gaming on TheOrdinaryGamer.com. You can also follow us on YouTube, uh, The Ordinary Gamer YouTube channel. And of course, you can follow us on Twitter at TheOrdinaryGamer01. Uh, you can follow me, uh, underscore Chris Edge, and you can follow Ender at Ender the T H A Foe. Uh, you can always spam him. Don't spam me. Uh, once again, guys, thank you so much for checking us out. I hope you've enjoyed the show today. And if Ender, if you have anything to say, by all means, the floor is yours. Uh, no, I'm gonna. You know, this is our second episode now, so keep watching. We're, we're trying to work on our craft, as it were. And uh, let us know what you think. Let us know what we can work on. And, uh, you know, we're all in. We're definitely not somebody that's going to just not take your advice and just run with whatever we want to do. So let us know what you think. Let us know what we can work on. And, uh, yeah, thanks for listening. Thanks, guys. And remember, uh, be original and doo-doo in a can.